Hey best pally, I'm Allie and I'm about to go v I'm about to go veal. I'm about to go veal. I'm about to eat veal. No! I'm about to go plant-based. As you can tell, I have a slight aversion to this. Just slight. So this video will probably be different from other vegan videos you've seen because it is from the perspective of a very skeptical and reluctant person. I will be showing you everything about how this affects me from my mental state about changing to my body composition, workout performance, changes in my sleep, blood, mood, bathroom. I'm calling it now. This is already a TMI situation. So why am I cutting out all animal products if I'm so reluctant? Well, if I don't, I'll just die in a handful of years. <laughs> Wish that was a joke. We'll unpack that later. Because I desperately need to get this new sprouty diet going immediately. Satan first. We'll be chugging this. We'll also be chugging these guys. I do believe a running theme here is going to be trying to get enough protein. Tempeh. Okay. I'm skeptical of soy, but it even says high protein on the label. All right. And on need the really vegan-y stuff. Hemp seed, flax seed, nutritional yeast. What? Also, of course I need chia. Oh wait, I don't need chia. Because I'm not good at estimating how much chia one needs to cover one's car. I can't believe my art supplies are becoming food supplies. I don't drink milk, so I don't plan on adding in milk alternatives. I don't eat bread, I don't need to start. I don't eat cheese, not gonna start with vegan cheese. I don't generally have fruit in my daily habits, so I'm not adding in fructose. Yes to cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, green beans, but frozen because lazy microwave. So many vegans are quick to say, of course you can get protein. Beans? Beans are a carb source. I don't know how people don't know this. Look at that. 20 grams of carbs for every six grams of protein. Ah, still getting it though. And the vegans that don't mention beans say, of course you can get protein. Nuts. Nuts are a fat source. I don't know how people don't know this. 17 grams of fat for every five grams of protein. Ah, still getting it though. And some nuts that aren't already chewed up for me. And some oats. I was previously a fan of these and then they destroyed my glucose and a past video. I'm gonna see if I can possibly fix that with some adjustments. I'm actively not getting plant stuff that tries to taste like animal stuff. It feels like these days it's actually really easy to be unhealthy and vegan simultaneously with all of these processed options. This could just be a video where I eat a ton of pizza with mayo and cheesecake with tubs of whipped cream and enchiladas with pasta on top and then end up less healthy than when I started. Although, I am getting pasta. So I'm going to try to stick to whole unprocessed stuff to really commit. Okay, but first I have to say goodbye to animal eating for possibly forever. I know the title of this video says something like 60 day challenge or whatever, cause that's clickable. But if this veganism works for the health problem that I'm currently battling, then I will be vegan for an indefinite, meaning all of the forever, the rest of my life amount of time. Oh dear. <laughs> Day one. It's not that I'm against eating plants, it's that I'm against changing my heavily ingrained habits. And this is going to be rough. Let me show you. This is what I usually have for dinner. That's three eggs, turkey, Greek yogurt. Yeah, there's avocado, but a lot of times that's replaced with chicken sausage. So yeah, a lot of things that came from animal things. Now, oh, and now you're looking at my three eggs going, what is your cholesterol doing? Great question. This is the reason I'm going vegan. My cholesterol is a whopping 290, way above the recommended under 200. Now, before you go judging me, let me direct your attention to my abs. Okay, abs are obviously not a sign of perfect health, though my lifestyle is actually pretty darn healthy. If you're new to this channel, I work out a lot. Cardio, CrossFit, Olympic lifting, powerlifting. As far as diet goes, I barely eat red meat, except for the occasional, very occasional gluttonous sword fest. I don't eat a lot of processed foods. I love intermittent fasting. I actually eat a lot of greens mixed with animal things, of course. I actually made a video about this a while ago when my cholesterol was 215, which is still too high. I saw a dietitian to try and fix this. She told me to get rid of those eggs. I did. I was having a lot of ghee, switched that for olive oil. I switched my cruciferous vegetables in for what my previous passion was, bell peppers. I even stopped drinking because the dietitian said to. It also helped that the pandemic happened and it turns out I'm actually a social drinker. Who knew? After two months of a lot of work putting in big changes to improve my cholesterol, it went from 215 up to 218. It got worse. So over the next months after that, I kept all the diet changes except for the eggs and the drinking because it didn't work anyway. Sure, that'll taste great. I just made a salad. Then I saw another doctor, a cardiologist, a functional doctor, and they all said, you should go on statin drugs. Ugh. It's not coming off of the pan, come on. So I'm very active, 
I eat well. I should mention I prioritize sleep and my cholesterol is 290. So my lifestyle is on point and my blood is garbage. You can't win at everything. So the help is drugs. Although there's one more way for my diet to be slightly more on point and that is going vegan. So here we are. Going fully plant-based is my last ditch effort to help my cholesterol without taking drugs. Which, by the way, my DNA test from the DNA company said that my genes are doing this to me. This doesn't look like something you just eat plain or whatever. Should I not just pile it on a plate and put it in my mouth? Look at me in my first vegan meal. Hmm, my expertly burnt seitan. My pudding is looking, hmm, interesting texture. Probably should add some flavor at all to this. Forgot about my pile of flax. Yeah, this tastes like really dry nothing. Down the hatch, because I need it. Mm. And here's hoping that I get better at this. All right, here we go. I made it to day two at crap. I made the same thing again. Oops. Here we go. I had no less than four urgent craps last night, and they were the rich color of Mother Earth. Green. Ah, vegan. Okay, now I'm branching out. I made a recipe where I put the flaxseed in the chia and then some organic cocoa powder because who doesn't love chocolate pudding? Hmm. That is. Absolutely terrible. It's a flavor I would describe as bitter ground. Dirt? Yeah. I'm trying tempeh now because I guess I shouldn't eat that much seitan every day. And I know I said no processed foods, but I don't know, is seitan processed? It's only one ingredient, but you gotta do a lot to the wheat to make it that protein. I don't know, is tempeh processed? No. I mean, it's soybeans, Wait. but they're cultured with fungus, by the way. I'm eating fungus today. There we go. Presentation score 100. Hmm. It is food. I'm just gonna finish this whole slab. And yeah, I made the chia ham cocoa pudding again. I couldn't think of anything else. We've arrived at leg day, and I can't just trust my muscles with beans. So I got some vegan protein powder, and I did a lot of research to land on this one, because a lot of vegan protein powders say, look at all our protein, but don't notice the fact that there are also a lot of carbs. Looking for something that has the most protein for the amount of calories I'm taking in. So for 30 grams of protein here, I only have to take in three grams of fat and two grams of carbs. This is always the hardest part. Where is the scoop? Oh. Uh, environmental packaging. There isn't a scoop. Great. Not bad. Yeah, I can't tell the difference. I'm not like, oh, I wish this came from something that mood. Okay. I've already had way too much. Okay. <laughs> this is definitely jumping the gun on any proof or results, but the feeling that I have right now when I eat this stuff is that it's exactly what my body needs. It feels like it's just the right thing and that it's gonna do what I need to my blood and my cholesterol and my health and that might be placebo, but I'll take a placebo any day because they work. Mm. I'm just soaking it up. Here you want to try? It looks like dirt. Come on, your little taste. I invented that. Yeah. It's like the smell of your car. Well, it's an acquired taste and it took me three days to acquire it, but I'm great now. <sighs> I can't believe I managed this long to go without being in public. Hi, I'm vegan. What's up? I'm vegan. Just want to let you know. She, she heard I'm vegan. I'm vegan. Hmm. Popcorn has butter. Don't worry, I have a plan. Okay, it's my first time at a restaurant being vegan. Also, I made them all come to a vegan restaurant because they <laughs> were Thank you. They serve wine, so it's fine. Okay, we are one quarter of the way in. I wanted to wait to make sure that I wasn't jumping to conclusions here, but I think I may be hungrier. I feel leaner, maybe a little weaker in the gym, but I still have that feeling of, oh yeah, this food is exactly what my body needs, but then my body's like, also give me a lot more. Like now broccoli tastes so good. And is that because it's the exact nutrients I need or because I'm starving? And now you're thinking, oh, well, you're just not eating as much. No, I'm eating exactly the same amount as I was before. It just doesn't have a personality. And I'm not saying just calories. I am matching calories and macros. So the same protein, fat, and carbs that I was before. I have a spreadsheet where I've been tracking everything for years, but now instead of putting eggs in, I put tofu and make it all fit and be the exact same macro. And I'm doing this because I am a scientist. Meaning I'm doing this because because any of the changes that I see, whether it's energy levels or blood panel or sleep or mood, we will know that it is because what I'm consuming is plant-based and no other variable. I figure I should do this to fully document my experience. This is the third time in a row now I've peed where it looks 
like pretty blood red and make a joke about showing you but i'm actually really concerned about this i don't feel bad that's like a uti thing maybe or something to do with being vegan now but i'm going to investigate this obviously gonna make a call to my primary care physician and no i am not <laughs> i am not going to call my primary care physician okay i did some googling which is dangerous because you can sometimes find out that you may already be dead. Oh, but it turns out I am peeing blood red because I am vegan. I had a crap ton of beets last night and that will cause your pee to be darkened. Oh, thank goodness. I was so concerned. How dumb I got that scared by plants. Okay, I said I was being sciencey and only having one variable, but there's another variable that I could not control for, which is probably a good thing. I'm getting a whole ton of fiber now. Way more than I used to, and that's a part of the reason why I'm hoping this diet will work, because soluble fiber takes cholesterol out of your body. It binds to the cholesterol, and then it just crap it out. Which, by the way, I should mention, my crap has been exceptionally normal. There was that one fluke, and I thought it was gonna be an ongoing thing. Nope, we good. But when I say I'm getting more fiber, you know now that I track all my macros, fiber is a part of my tracking. This is a day before I went vegan. Look at that. Oh, I'm having chicken breast, chicken sausage, three eggs. Oh. But look at the fiber, 15 grams, which is 10 less than the recommended daily. And that was my usual. Let's look at my usual now. Holy crap. Pun, 63 grams of fiber, which is 38 more than I need. Although the 25 recommended daily is not necessarily optimal. I want to get that up there and I'm glad that it's working. And it could potentially even help with my glucose levels. When I had Dr. Casey from Levels on my podcast, she talked about this. People increase fiber in their diet really um, intensively. They've found that they actually spike less. And I'm thinking that might be a part of the reason why my body's like, ooh, this is good for me. It's not some mystical vegan secret, it's fiber. I decided to do an extended fast from yesterday into tomorrow, and I wasn't even gonna talk about it in this video, except that I'm hungry right now, and that's not usually what happens. Generally, I won't even notice until the evening. My glucose is lower, which I've been noticing that it drops down faster. Since going vegan, I'm kind of hanging out at a lower blood sugar than usual, which is actually a good thing. That's been shown to promote longevity that will help me with metabolic flexibility, but I also think it's a part of the reason why right now I'm thinking about food. I'm on hour 45 of my fast and about to work out and break my fast with vegan protein shake, which I'm actually excited about. Last night was rough, but that's usual. The evening is the hardest part of a fast for me. This morning was also rough. Usually after sleeping through a fast and waking up, I feel awesome and energized. Like I get that focused feeling if you've heard about this during fast where your body runs on fat and it's way cool. Not exactly getting that way cool feeling right now. <clears throat> Still hungry early in the day, which that never happens. I mean, I ate yesterday. I'm not fasted, but I am weak. My legs are all woobly. If you're not a new Fitness Outrageous Pally, you know that I love fasting. It's usually pretty effortless and energizing, but an extended fast plus plant-based, I don't think that works for me. Welcome to Vegan Outrageous, where we give you innovative plant-based hacks. Today's hack is not doing dishes. Take that, animal eaters. It is day 30, I have made it an entire month as a vegan. I'm a vegan now, did you know that I'm a vegan? Everyone's on the block <laughs> This calls for a bigger announcement than search emoji plant. And there we are, it's what I have to do because we all do it, us vegans. I should mention that I'm hungry again today and I'm working out way early because I wanted to break my fast and eat sooner. I feel like I've been complaining about being hungry more. Yeah, you complain like every day. Okay, well, I really want this to be fine and just stay exact same variables, but I might think about adding in more protein or just more calories in general. Add in fish, it's fine. Sure! <sighs> Day 40. Yesterday I had a music video shoot, hence the rock star hair, and there was pizza on set and it sucked. I couldn't just be normal and partake in pizza. And it was my shoot, I paid for the pizza. So it's not eating my usual meals that has been troublesome. It's when you're out at something like that or if someone offers you a bite of their meal, chances are you can't try it. And this is probably less relatable of a problem, but I get gifts from people like the marketers of the matrix and I can't eat 
any of the jelly beans that they sent me because I looked it up and Jelly Belly uses beeswax on their coating and us vegans love bees so we can't eat any of the wax that they worked so hard to produce. But the relatable part is that when you're vegan, you have to be mindful of everything and everyone around you has to be mindful for you, whether they're giving you a gift or offering food or ordering you food on set. And the number of times that I've thought about not going vegan in 40 days is precisely several. So I do feel like this is affecting my mood and stress level negatively. And I can't imagine doing this in a city that isn't like LA, because here it feels like everybody rolls the red carpet out for vegans and I'm still complaining. No, 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 this sucks, I hate it. I don't even wanna film right now. I'm really struggling. I feel like I'm craving sugar, I'm weak. And it's like this every day. If I'm measuring my mood on a scale of zero to to cheat day, I'm at about a one. Although this could be because I haven't had a cheat day this whole time. Generally, every couple of weeks, I will find a day where I don't track and kind of go nuts a little. I have been zero nuts for how many days? Although I have been eating a lot of nuts. <laughs> so I have decided I'm gonna add another 18 grams of protein. That's like one more serving of seitan. And I know that's adding another variable to this experiment, but it feels like I need something. Uh, I don't know if the protein is helping. I feel like these next two weeks are gonna be as long as the first 48 days, which went by pretty okay. I can't tell if my body is lacking something from this diet or that it just needs to adjust. This is the case with working out or getting started fasting or anything that self-improvement that requires some effort at the beginning, it sucks at first so you can get over that and get to where the thing is serving you well. So maybe veganism is good for me and I'm just still in the suck part and I need to get over that. And it doesn't help that when I went to Fogo de Chao and made a reservation, they put my email on their email list so they keep reminding me that I should come in and have their meat. Look at that, free dessert, I don't wanna pass that up. But of course it probably has milk and eggs and meat too. Haha, <laughs> I have solved my problem. Now I can have all my previous satisfaction while still being vegan. Hmm, it's just like having eaten something formerly sentient. Are those the eyes of a cow? This must be meat. Yep, definitely exactly what I needed. Avocado's gonna be super weird. Yep. <laughs> I did it! This is my last meal as a vegan, unless this experiment worked and then this was just the first 60 days at the beginning of forever. Now, I know I shared a lot of struggling, but I do think this could be mentally sustainable for me if I'm not being so insanely strict as I was. And that's because I really wanted to challenge myself, go full vegan, have a great title for a video. And it's not because if I slipped up and had some butter at a restaurant, oh no, my LDL would skyrocket. So if we're talking being generally more plant-based, I'm a fan and I'm probably gonna keep eating seitan and a lot more garbanzo beans, even if my labs don't say, hey, good job, it worked. Which leads me to this. When I was talking to my functional doctor before even starting this experiment, she was looking at my really healthy lifestyle and the fact that my cholesterol just kept getting worse. And she said, I wrote it down on the Zoom because it was so remarkable. I'm not going to tell you that just going plant-based is enough here. That would be medical malpractice on my part. Meaning she was trying to temper my expectations for how well this would even work and was suggesting that I still might have to go on statins even if I'm a vegan. Wrote this down. I don't wanna take any medications, but <laughs> she's a functional doctor. She's aiming not to medicate me and still is kind of like, yeah, I don't know. Statins just might be the only answer. And yet I still said, I'm going vegan for 60 days. I probably won't make it. Hey, I made it. And now I'm going immediately to a DEXA scan and then to blood work. And while we wait for my results, let's break my streak. <laughs> oh yeah, goodbye streak. Bet you're surprised that I went with fish as my first non-vegan meal, but this was a very calculated decision based on three things. One, fish is delicious. Two, it still has a face. Three, polyunsaturated fats. Now let me explain. I mentioned that the vegan diet isn't magic, it's science. There's a lot more fiber, but there's also another feature of non-magic, just science, and that is replacing saturated fat with the type of fat that lowers your cholesterol monounsaturated fat, which is nuts, olive oil, things that I actually was already doing before my vegan diet. But then there is polyunsaturated fat, which seems to lower cholesterol even more than monounsaturated fat, and that is in fish. So if this vegan diet works, which we all have high hopes that it definitely will, right? We believe that. Then the next step would be to add in fish and see if that helps even more. So let me know in the comments if you wanna see another experiment, 60 days pescatarian, and know what those results are.
And now for the vegan results. I just got off a call with my functional doctor and after 60 days, holy crap. Let's just start with my body composition scan. Okay, this whole time I'm hungry, feeling a little weak, and I'm worried that an equal amount of plant protein isn't the same as animal protein. And then my DEXA scan says I gained weight. Yeah, I gained two pounds of muscle and lost a pound of fat. I realize this is the elusive lean gains body recomposition. I've never been able to have that type of success in such a short amount of time. I lost a whole percentage of body fat. I scientifically got stronger and leaner as a vegan. I could not have asked for better aesthetic results. Here are the before and after photos. I am muscular even if you can't see it visually. I'm just thrilled that I'm not skinny fat, which is definitely what I expected. Of course, the reason I did this was my cholesterol, not aesthetics. So let's look at the lab results. I'm going to quote my doctor again. Again here, she says the exact words, the results were spectacular. She said I exceeded even the top couple of results she's ever seen in her career. My total cholesterol went from 290 down to 157. My LDL from 200 down to 83. Look at all that scary red and yellow turned into nice and healthy green. Oh my goodness. If I had gone on the drug that they wanted, statins, a good result would have been a 30% reduction if I'm lucky. This was a 60% reduction. From every aspect of these results, I have a definitive answer and it is the exact opposite of what I expected and I should never not be vegan again. What? Okay, I'm mostly joking about being angry. This is actually incredibly awesome and I'm so stoked that it's looking like I don't have to go on drugs. Oh my goodness, I'm in control of my body, which it has not felt like that for the past over two years. So I guess welcome to my new channel, Reluctantly Thrilled Vegan. No, actually, my doctor even agrees it would be smart to add in fish and test out pescatarian for 60 days. So again, let me know in the comments if you wanna see what happens with that. And if you liked this, you'll probably like seeing when I tested out fasting before bed for a month. I'll put that down there for you. Hey Best Pally, I'm Allie, and I am generally covered in a lot of wearable tech. And I even sleep on a smart mattress. All of these things give me a lot of information about what's going on in my body. Heart rate, HRV, sleep cycles, but how do I take all that down?